What's going on, everybody? I am back, bold, bald, beautiful, and boisterous. Today, we're going to be discussing the poem The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, which is his most anthologized poem. This is a poem that most high school students, at least here in the United States, will likely read, and those who do not read it will at some point in their life encounter the last two lines, which are taken to be a magical inspirational quote, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So this poem, at least on its surface, is about a person who finds themselves at a fork in a road in a wood, and they have to make a choice which path they are going to take. And that's what it is about on its surface, but of course there's something more significant, meaningful, and symbolic going on in the poem, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. I'm going to go ahead and read the poem all the way through, and then we are going to take it line by line, stanza by stanza, and do some literary analysis. With that said, let's read the poem. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now let's look at the first stanza. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Already in the first line of the poem, we have the setting and also the general mood, if you will. Two roads diverge. So we have a fork in a path in a yellow wood. Now I home in on this imagery. In particular, the wood being described as yellow. This, of course, is signifying that the time of year is the autumn or fall. Now, that's symbolically significant because, of course, autumn or the fall represents death in literature. And we'll see here shortly what this really is about symbolically is making choices. And the reality is for human beings is that we are mortal creatures. We have seasons of our own life. And we have only so much time to make the choices that we can make because, once again, we are mortal. And that is symbolized here by it being a yellow wood. Now, continuing on here. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Now, the question might be, why is the speaker sorry? Why would the speaker be sorry that they're taking one path and they can't take the other, perhaps simultaneously? Well, because, of course, you have to make a choice. You are only one human being. And the reality is, in life, sometimes it's the case that you are going to make choices, and those choices are going to preclude you from making other choices. If you, like I did, for example, made the decision that I wanted to pursue a professional career as a college professor as opposed to a mixed martial artist, I cannot now go back in time and take the other path. I've already walked down this path so far that the other one is no longer available to me. So there's a kind of sorrow, if you will, about that. Because of course, as human beings, we want to experience as much as possible. But the sad reality of life is that we only can experience so much. We can't do everything. We don't have time to do everything. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, which is just a description of the path sinuously snake-like bending under the undergrowth. Moving on here to the second stanza. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there 
had warned them really about the same. Now, I find the reasoning on the part of the speaker very interesting here, and it tells us something. They make the choice that they are going to take the path that is less worn. What does the speaker say here? They take the other one, which has the better claim because, which is a premise indicator, this is the speaker providing a reason why they're taking that path, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Wanted, of course, in this case, is being used to mean lacking. It lacks wear. So one path appears to have, at least at one point in time, been trodden, and the other path has not been trodden. And then the speaker says, kind of, confusingly, if you will, at the end, that nonetheless, despite this one appearing to be more trodden than the other, that they had been worn roughly about the same. Now, the third stanza reads, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. So despite the fact that one path is more trodden than the other on this particular morning, nobody has walked down either path. And so they are both blanketed, so to speak, with leaves. In leaves, no step had trodden black. Now the speaker then says, oh, I kept the first for another day. And it's put here with an exclamation mark. So it's almost like the speaker is, in a certain sense, diluting him or herself, at least in this particular instant. Of course, they make an exception in the last two lines of this stanza, but the idea is, of course, well, if you walk down one path and you continue to go down that route and then you take another path, there's another fork and you walk down that path, you take another fork and you walk down that path, the reality is, is that you are very unlikely to trace your way all the way back and go down the other one. Now, what does this mean symbolically? Once again, if you make a certain choice in life, sometimes that precludes you making other choices. Sometimes you make one decision, that leads to another decision, that leads to another decision, another decision, and suddenly your life is drastically different from what it was, and you can't go back in time and make a different choice. And that's exactly what has happened here, right? Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. Choices lead to more choices, and over time, those build up such that we cannot go back in time and make different choices. The last stanza reads, I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I shall be telling this with a sigh. So what is the nature of this sigh? Is this a sigh of sadness, a sigh of exasperation, a sigh perhaps of something like happiness or joy? It's not really qualified, but the way that it's often interpreted is as being one of joy or exuberance, like, ah, I made the correct choice. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. The speaker is a imagining him or herself at some point in the future talking to somebody about this one simple but monumental decision that they made that has had a drastic impact on who they became in life. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So what does this mean here again symbolically? Well, taking the road less traveled by, Let's travel by, excuse me, is essentially taking the uncommon route in life uh, by contrast to the common route. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can go about discussing this, but one way that I talk about it for my students so it's easy for them to conceptualize is in terms of career choice. So some of my students may have the secret desire that they at one point want to be artists or entrepreneurs painters, poets, musicians, but most of them are in college. 
Why are they doing that? They are going to college because they are taking a path that is more traveled by. It's a common route to success and living a life that is stable and comfortable. They believe that when they eventually acquire a degree, that's going to allow them to have a career. They're going to earn sufficient money so that they could have a stable life and not have to worry about paying the bills and buying food. That's their idea. Now, why do they do that? Well, what they are seeking is safety and security. Most human beings are like that. We want safety and we want security. And as a consequence of that, we take the common route to success. And this is not to denigrate it whatsoever. It's just the fact of the matter. Now, what is the uncommon route? Well, that is taking a path that involves a high degree of risk. If, for example, students wanted to be a musician or a poet, and they pursued those career careers independent of going to college, what does that entail? A high degree of risk. So it just happens that in the arts and also with entrepreneurship that very rarely are people actually successful. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a very small percentage of people who are ever able to actually make a living or become famous and uh, renowned for their artistic or business capabilities. And the reality is that most people who try to take that path actually end up failing. So it's a path, the less common route, which has a high degree of risk, but it also has a high degree of reward if you are able to do it. So the idea here again is that if you take the road that is less traveled by, you are going to be an entirely different person. You are going to be singular, so to speak, as a human being. Now, as far as the poem is concerned, it ends with, and that has made all the difference. So notice here that difference is not qualified. Is it difference in a bad sense or a good sense? It could be that if we're just using the example, once again, of career choice, that this person has gone on to be successful in whatever risky endeavor they were engaged in. It could also be the difference in the sense that they made a choice and they ended up failing entirely. And so they are a completely different person who has learned from those failures and perhaps they decided eventually that they wanted to take a more common route, the road that is more traveled by. Again, this is just one way to conceptualize the poem, but the beautiful thing about this particular poem is that it's not specific. There's not a lot of qualification, so much so that we can kind of read significance and symbolism into the poem and try to apply it as much as possible to our own lives. I was just talking about career choices, but this can apply to essentially any choice that we make in life. If we take the road that's less traveled by, that is going to entail a significant significant degree of risk, but it also has the upside of potentially being very rewarding. By contrast, if we take the road that is most or more traveled by, of course, we could perhaps have more safety and security and comfortability in our lives. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Let me know what you guys think about my interpretation. Do you agree, disagree? Do you have other insights about the poem? I completely welcome disagreement in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' comments, and we will see you in the next video.